So let's transition in from the very important modality of radiation to chemotherapy. And mm -hmm. so I want to kind of get your perspective on, you know, is, is there a standard chemotherapy platform for stage three? So Chemo great, radiotherapy? So great question. So I, I think that it depends um, where you are. I think it depends on, and it's, it's very physician dependent. So I think there's probably two top ones. The one I tend to favor is carboplatin and, and paclitaxel. I think it's very tolerable for patients. It's weekly. It also gives us kind of an excuse to bring the patients in once a week and, and check on them and make sure. And then the other option I think that's right up there is also cisplatin and etoposide. We have to think about the toxicities that go along with that, especially when we start looking at some of our older patients and their creatinine clearances may not meet that metric of where we'd like them to be to safely deliver the medication. And also the schedule with the plan with it is a little bit different and can be challenging, especially if you don't necessarily start the patients on a Monday with the radiation. With that setting, I, I think it's very important to talk to the radiation oncologist, see when are they going to work on the treatment planning, when are we going to start so that everything can be coordinated very, very well. Any, any other thoughts? Well, you know, as Janelle has pointed out, there are numerous different regimens out there, including platinum etoposide, platinum taxane, or even platinum pemetrexid. They all have a little bit different toxicity profiles, so often I will look at the actual patient as to what types of comorbidities they have going on, what can I afford to give them as far as toxicity, what can I not afford to give them as far as toxicity. And the medical oncology community has failed to really do the appropriate studies to define one standard, Correct. right? I mean, we do have the sense from a, from a VA study that whether you use carbotax low dose or, or cisatoposide full dose, that outcomes seem to be the same. Uh, so a choice of chemotherapy may not make a difference, but toxicities are, are, are clearly different, as, as, yes. you, as you pointed out. One thing I want to note is that with all the advances with radiation oncology, I think it's significantly helped us as medical oncologists yeah. with being able to deliver chemotherapy um, effectively, concurrently with the radiation therapy. And I've seen across my practice also that there's just been a decrease in the toxicities of patients um, with the esophagitis being lower, with the pneumonitis rates, I think, at least from my standpoint, have gone down and there's data to support that. I must say what I was going to ask you, you two, have you ever talk to a radiation oncologist and, and based on what they told you, changed your choice of chemotherapy regimen? Yes. Yes. Really? Yes. I, yes. I haven't done yes. it. Really? No, I <laughs> oh, Really? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Tell yeah. me about that. So I, you know, especially those, there's some patients where they're kind of borderline, right. um, you know, they're kind of on the youngish, youngish end and you're thinking about, let me, let me go ahead with the cisplatin etoposide. Uh -huh. And then you start talking to the radiation on, oncologist and hear all the areas that they need to radiate and yeah. you might get a little bit more toxicity. more worried, yeah. right? And then because of the toxicity yeah. risk and you, you know, hmm, maybe I should, we should switch and pivot to carboplatin and, okay. and the paclitaxel. The case where I actually did change it was on a patient who had very severe COPD, very little lung function. And because with carbotaxol, even though it was not statistically significant, there is a little bit more in the way of radiation, pneumonitis, and potentially fibrosis, at least a trend towards that. Mm -hmm. So I did change that patient from doing a carbotaxol to a mm -hmm. cisatoposide type regimen. We will debate uh, people, you know, depending on where you trained mm -hmm. and what you're used to doing, you t try to tend to do that. So I don't know that there's one right answer. Mm -hmm. uh, but but I, I guess I would advise in terms of a best practice sort of thing that you generally stick with those two kind of standard mm -hmm. regimens mm -hmm. and there's right. really no reason. I mean, there may be individual spin-offs where you mm -hmm. might want to use a Pemetrex yes. uh, sort of thing. But I think as a routine ki kind of um, uh, uh, strategy mm -hmm. that, that, that we, you know, we have those two that everyone's comfortable with. We want to get treatment right for them. So yeah. that's what I tell patients. I'm like, they're going to, when you get started on treatment, that they're going to make sure that everything is right, that everybody's met, uh, that the physicians over in radiation oncology have met with the physicists, they've met as a team, and that you're, they're mapping out your tumor and making sure they, they give you the right therapy with, to what we talked about before, with the lowest toxicity, so that we in turn can get that chemotherapy delivered.